Okay, so here we are with another tree that's blooming in the spring and another kind of catkins. We've looked at birch catkins and uh, to review, catkins are funny little dangly things that trees put out in the spring and pollen comes out of them. They're not showy and that is because they're not trying to attract an insect that would be attracted to a nectar source or um, uh, need flowers to sort of be the road sign to tell it where to, to uh, land on the, the flower. These uh, just uh, dangle and let loose pollen and tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, female flowers, these are the male flowers, uh, receive the pollen and then they eventually turn into a nut. This is an oak tree, so of course it's going to produce an acorn. But as far as families, uh, this tree is in the beech family, so it's related to chestnuts. There used to be a lot of chestnuts across the United States, and we lost most of them due to a blight. And of course, beeches. Uh, beeches and chestnuts are not so native to Iowa. You find them horticulturally, but you sure find a lot of oaks. Here's another one of our spring flowering trees. This one pretty much everybody knows, the flowering crab apple. Um, they come in a variety of colors, white, uh, white with a little pink, uh, pink, pink, and then a little bit darker red. Uh, there is actually a native apple of uh, crab apple um, to Iowa. It's very sensitive to getting a disease on the leaves, a rust that causes the, the trees to drop their leaves, so generally by July, not very attractive. So um, the horticultural industry has uh, hybridized a lot of a lot of types of crab apples. So you have these beautiful flowering plants in the spring. And uh, they eventually put a little bitty crab apple out. Uh, historically, the crab apple, which really is just a type of apple, uh, put out a, a larger crab apple. People would even harvest them and actually make jams and jellies out of them. And of course, the apple, they're in the apple family, they're in the rose family, but it includes all the apples that they are related to. Uh, plums, pears, roses, uh, and prairie smoke, a nice prairie plant, are all in the rose family. Okay, here's another tree that uh, not only just blooms in the spring, this one has been blooming for quite a while. This is a soft maple. And uh, it had uh, tiny little flowers out uh, in the early March. Uh, and those flowers have already finished and pollinated and is now producing these uh, uh, little propellers that uh, maple trees make. Um, this is called a winged Samara or key. They're always in pairs of maples. Uh, as far as plant families, maple is an enormous family. There's a lot of kinds of maples out there, uh, but there's not a lot of things related to them in the, in the maple family. Soft maple. Here is another uh, blooming tree that you wouldn't guess was blooming because the flowers are not obvious. Uh, this is a river birch here at Gray's Lake. Uh, these little catkins, again catkins that uh, produce pollen, were uh, very short. You can see the little kind of stubby ends. Those actually haven't elongated. They were about an inch long and the whole thing was like that in the winter. Now that um, the spring has come, they're elongated. They'll drop the tiny little flowers will uh, uh, receive that pollen and eventually form a little nut. And uh, this is the birches, which is uh, in the uh, birch family, related to alder and hazelnut and ironwood, which is another very common Iowa tree. Okay, we're back with cottonwood. We already showed you very large cottonwood. Here we have one short enough that I can grab a hold of a branch and uh, try to demonstrate a couple things. Uh, these are in the willow family, so they're related to, um, to our native willows, uh, pussy willow and uh, sandbar willow. and. Um, Prairie willow, also weeping willow, which is, is European. They also make catkins, uh, like many other trees that we've showed you this spring. However, um, the uh, cottonwood has uh, had its cat catkins out for a month already. Here we're in the first week of May. Already dropped them and already ready, ready to pr produce fruits. Um, and of course, the fruits on cottonwoods are going to be the little cottony fluffs that uh, get into everything in another couple weeks. And uh, that's because they had already way back in early March. Cottonwood related to willows, uh, popular still to spring, blooming tree. This one uh, is a red oak. The first oak that we showed you was a white oak over on the other side of Grace Lake. Uh, this one is a red oak which has some different characteristics like the leaves have points on them. And, uh, but it also produces catkins. This is a young tree so it doesn't, it doesn't have very many out so it won't be producing a lot of acorns this year but it will be producing a few. And um, this tiny little structure right here will elongate and put out the pollen. The female flowers are too small to even see without a hand lens. Uh, red oak and uh, one of the nicer trees at Grays Lake. This, here we are with another uh, flowering tree at Grays Lake. This is a box elder, which is an interesting species in that uh, for two reasons. One is that the male and the females are on different trees. So you actually have boy box elders and girl box elders. Uh, this one, which I picked off another tree, is the female. The, uh, they've already done their pollinating things, so the female flowers are beginning to fall off. 
and uh, we'll soon begin forming uh, maple seeds. Uh, the other interesting thing about box elder is it's actually in the maple family. It's called uh, ash-leaved maple, as a common name elsewhere, and uh, in Iowa and Midwest it tends to be called box elder. So that concludes our uh, set of uh, looking at flowering trees in the spring, uh, talking about catkins and a variety of different uh, structures. And uh, next time you see a tree, don't think it's just all green. It's got flowers.